Hello, and welcome to the International Quilt Museum's Virtual First Friday Fun. I'm Lauren Holt, Education Coordinator at the museum, and today we're going to be exploring how color value can be used to create a sense of light and depth for 3D illusions in quilts, and I'll be chatting with quilt artist MJ Kinman about how she achieves glow in her gem quilts. Let's get started. What is color value? When we're looking at art, the term value is a way to talk about the lightness or darkness of a color. Some colors have a value close to white, while others have a value close to black, and others are in the middle. If you're trying to create a sense of three-dimensionality, value is even more important than color because it helps trick the human eye into seeing light, shape, and depth in a two-dimensional art piece like a painting, a photograph, or a quilt. Color value is not the same as color saturation. Instead of lightness and darkness, color saturation is a measure of color intensity. A color may have high or low saturation, as well as light or dark color value. One traditional quilt pattern that makes use of color value is the tumbling blocks pattern. In this pattern, quilt makers piece together fabric diamonds of three different values in order to create an illusion of three-dimensional blocks. This value change is often emphasized by changes in color as well, which you can see in this example, where one side of each block is black, one is red, and one is a pale green. But if you convert the quilt to grayscale, you can see that each of these colors also has a different color value. The black diamonds are the darkest and define the left side of the blocks. The red diamonds create a middle value that defines the top of each block, and the green diamond's value draws the eye with its lightness, defining the right side of each tumbling block. Consider these variations. In baby blues, on the left, Barbara Karen maintains the same colors and value relationships while changing the scale to bring new interest to the pattern. On the right, John Cuttrell's tumbling blocks variation adds an element of color to create radiating diamonds in pink, tan, and blue. If we look at this quilt in grayscale, we can see that the tan and pink blocks are composed with fabrics very similar in value, meaning that the pink diamond is very difficult to see. The blue blocks, however, were created with a darker value and are even more obvious in black and white than they were in color. The technique of using color value to create a sense of light, shape, and three-dimensional space also appears in studio quilts. Studio quilts, sometimes also called art quilts, are quilts that are made to be displayed as art rather than used as a blanket and are usually original patterns. Studio quilts began to gain popularity in the 1970s and 1980s, and many early studio quilt artists used a variety of color values to create illusions and a sense of light and space in their work. These quilts, created by artists who are still making quilts today, show some of the ways color value can be used to trick the eye. Michael James in Aurora used a shift in lighter and darker shades to create a swirling sense of light and shadow. Pauline Burbage and Chris Wolf Edmonds used a combination of shape, line, and color value to create a sense of three-dimensional space in their quilts, Finn and Night Rainbow Number no. 5, The Secondary Bow. Both of these quilts use color value in a similar way to the traditional tumbling blocks pattern to create a sense of a top, a bottom, and a side of a 3D shape. One quilt artist who works extensively with color value in her quilts today is MJ Kinman. Kinman is known for her gem quilts and likes to tell people that she makes the biggest gemstones in the world. Her most recent quilt series, National Treasures, celebrates gems from the National Gem Collection at the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History. The IQM is lucky enough to host the first exhibition of one of Kinman's quilts, Torch Song, inspired by the Whitney Flame Topaz. In her quilts, Kinman uses both color value and color saturation to create not just a sense of space, but also a sense of glittery glow, entirely made from cloth. I recently got a chance to talk with Kinman about her work and how she uses color in her quilts. Here's some of what she shared with me. You can't just talk about color as a single tone unless you have a pure white quilt or a pure red quilt colors interact and they do things together and they have different impacts on each other. And one of the things that my quilts are teaching me these days, and I'm beginning to figure out, you know, ding, 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 
is the, the, the idea of color saturation to create glow. And uh, what I'm learning as I'm kind of doing my experiments, I'm, I'm creating a class all around, around this particular, these, these, these concepts of contrast, uh, value and, and saturation, is that I, as I'm finding glow is achieved when you take a hue or a color in its purest form, its purest essence, you know, um, a, a red, the purest essence of red or fuchsia or yellow or blue, without any hints of gray, right? Without any hints of gray, it could be a light. You, you can add, add white to it. So it gets a little lighter, but it's still high saturation. Or you could add black to it, but it's still high saturation. It's that gray that darkens things up and gets things all muddy. And so when you, when you start adding gray, it becomes lower uh, of lower saturation. And what I'm learning is when you take something that's high saturation and you wrap it with low saturation, it looks like it glows. Um, I, and some people are like, well, duh, MJ, but you know, it's taken me a long time to figure that out. And I'm, you know, looking at paintings and go, oh, yeah, that's the way it is. That's how it works. Um, and I'm still experimenting with that a little bit, but um, let me show you um, another example of what I mean by that. So here's an example of torch song and you, you have this in the exhibit. So what I wanted to do was really create some of these, these high saturation areas. You can see right in the middle, man, that's some high fuchsia, some coral, all of this yummy uh, flame red, but then it's surrounded by some pieces that have a little bit darker, uh, more of a gray hue. And I think that really sets that off. Those gray hues and facets really, um, emphasize the brightness of its neighbor. And, and that's what that's the best thing about, about contrast. That's what I love about it. Here is an example of a model that I think might help explain it a little bit better. This is the, what they call the color picker tool in any photo editing app. Um, when you want to go and make adjustments to images in, a, in a, an app like um, Adobe Photoshop, or I use a free one called Photoscape, you have an option of picking a couple of different models or, or ways of doing that. And this is one of them. Over on the right-hand side, do you see, Lauren, we've got this bar where mm -hmm. all the rainbow is. So you can slide that little toggle up and down and you'll, it'll go from this beautiful fuchsia down to blue, down to green, down to yellow, and then back to red. Then over to the left is a perfect example of saturation and glow. Everything in the upper right-hand corner is the purest essence of that hue, of that color. It's the brightest fuchsia. And now if you go along the top, it's still highly saturated. You're just adding white to it until you get to white but it's still highly saturated. There's no gray in it at all, just white. If you go down the, the right axis, the right vertical axis, you're adding black to it. It's pure black, not a gray tone. So it's still highly saturated, but it's, it's getting black. Now, look down here in this rest of this beautiful area. You are adding shades and, and, and um, uh, tones of gray. And do you see how it gets a little more muted until it gets all the way down to a gray mm -hmm. and then down to black? And this is an example of when you surround high saturation with low saturated colors, it glows. I, I use that tool a lot and I had never quite put that together. That's really Excellent. informative. Thank you. Excellent. Good, good. So my last question today is, do you have any advice for artists who are just starting to work in the use of color and value to create shape and space? Wow. You know, um, I would just say keep, keep, Keep experimenting, keep experimenting. There's this wonderful book out there called Art and Fear, The Perils and Pleasures of Making Art by David Bales, B-A-Y-L-E-S and Ted Orland, O-R-L-A-N-D. And the, the premise, and it's a wonderful book. It's, it basically, the premise of their book is your art is waiting to be made. Only you can make it. So make lots of it and get to it right? Um, make good art, make bad art. It doesn't matter. Just make it because every single quilt teaches you something that you can then uh, add, attach to the next one. And like I said, my quilts teach me so much and you can then, you can educate your, your quilts educate you, right? It, it, it expands your, your, your perspective and your understanding uh, of things. Um, and that's one of the reasons I also like working in a series, uh, the, the Bourbon series, the Angle of Repose series, the National Gem Collection series is that, you know, it's really hard to, to, to learn everything you possibly can about that one subject in one, one piece, one work. So I like to, 
you know, do multiple so I can have multiple expressions of an idea, but also that in a series, man, that first one's going to tell me what worked and what didn't work. And so I'm going to make that, I'm going to do something maybe a little different, or, or maybe I'm going to do the same thing in, in the second one, a little change. And then that one's going to teach me stuff. So I would say just get in there and make art and make lots of it. Don't worry about whether it's good or bad or people are going to like it. Bottom line is whatever makes your heart joyful, that is, is, is your art. That's good art for you. And that's why we make art is to make our hearts go, we love it. If you would like to start experimenting with color value to create illusions and glow yourself, we have a worksheet you can use to get started. It asks you to pick three values to recreate the tumbling blocks pattern, and you can create whatever kind of variation you like. Whatever art you choose to make, we'll be happy to see it. You can share photos of your work in the comments below this video on Facebook, or by tagging us at International Quilt Museum on Instagram. If you're interested in seeing the quilts featured in this video in person, Facets on Fire, the gemstone quilts of MJ Kinman will be on display at the International Quilt Museum through August 6th, 2022. Aurora by Michael James, Finn by Pauline Burbage, and Night Rainbow 5, The Secondary Bow by Chris Wolf Edmonds are also on display at the museum as part of the exhibition An Evolving Vision, The James Collection, 1997 to 2022 from the studio, on display through October 12th, 2022. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation, and thank you for joining us for First Friday Facts.